and thank you for making time to share with us the next big thing in mobile communications. In 1984, exactly 19 and a half years ago, Vodafone started its operations with its first GSM mobile network. At that time, most of the network around the world were still analog, including Australia and New Zealand, which were using AMS technology. Vodafone became the first mobile network in the region to roll out GSM network with digital technology. Since that proud moment when the course of telecommunication industry in the country was changed forever, Vodafone never looked back. Vodafone has been maintaining technology lead and keeping Fiji in power with the rest of the world. Our network technology evolution has seen us graduate from 2G to 2.5G to 2.75G in 2008 to 3G, last year 3.5G. From tonight, Fijians will join billions of people across the world already online, and billions are more expected to come online in the next few years as the broadband coverage expands with even faster speeds, transforming the world into a highly connected and integrated world. Access to information, communication and technology has transformed and will continue to transform every industry in every country. With the convergence of technology, telecommunications, computing, and broadcasting, the mobile device is increasingly becoming the focal point of our lives. With the age of port play, voice, data, information, and entertainment are all in your mobile phones. In, in Fiji, we have seen the immense impact that ICT has had on social development and economic growth. Fijians have embraced the digital revolution. We'd like to acknowledge the government for its ongoing support and enlightened policies towards the telco sector that has allowed a rapid expansion of telecommunication industry in Fiji. From the market liberations in 2008, there are more mobile phones than people in this country. Vodafone today, Fiji today has 110% mobile penetration. Ladies and gentlemen, now to the launch of 4G and what it all means for us. Our 4G LT has numerous benefits. First and foremost, the fourth generation wireless network provides a massive boost to entities involving real-time transfer of large amounts of data and live streaming of high-definition video and television. LT stands for long-term evolution, and that precisely is what it is is a long-term standard which will evolve over time. The potential for 4G is unlimited. There are some networks around the world in which the download speeds are something like 100 megabits per second. You can imagine the impact such speed has on people's lives. Buffering and delays are practically eliminated in applications such as HD video calling, live TV streaming, remote video conferencing, and even remote health, medicine, and e-learning can be finally be a reality. True 4G LTE broadband finally fulfills the promise of internet. Our initial rollout of 4G will cover Suva, Lamy, and Suva Corridor, and by early next year, we'll cover Nandi, Dendrao, and Nandi Airport. This will mean 65% of population will enjoy 4G coverage at the end of phase stage of our world. Ladies and gentlemen, at this juncture, I would like to acknowledge my technical team, Andrew, and our network vendors, ZT, who have delivered a commercially ready network in a short span of time. It's only three months that TEF awarded 4G spectrums after our competitive bidding process. So Andrew and David, well done. I would also like to acknowledge the Samsung team, who is present here tonight, and have been working with our team to get a range of Samsung Android phones ready for all of you today. Every segment of our customer base, from small to large, and from individuals to household, stand to gain from faster speeds offered through 4G. Our endeavor is a noble one, to bring the best in high-speed broadband coverage to the people of Fiji. Today, we announce that we are 4G LG ready. We are no longer have to wait for the future. The future is today, so unlock yours today. Power to you.
Thank you very much, Aslam. Well, ladies and gentlemen, the leaps and bounds that Vodafone has taken in uh, technology and expanding its technology in reaching 4G would not have been possible without the policies of the Bainimarama government. So tonight, it is my pleasure and honor to welcome you, sir, for your speech this uh, evening, launching Vodafone's 4G network. Minaka. The Attorney General and Minister for Communications, the Managing Director of Vodafone Fiji, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, Bulabnaka, and a very good evening to you all. Tonight, we launch the latest phase of the telecommunications revolution that is sweeping Fiji and has transformed all our lives. Fourth generation mobile of 4G. Once again, we are at the cutting edge of technology, and I'm very pleased that Vodafone has been able to deliver the technology so quickly and to be here as Prime Minister to share the moment. I'm especially gratified that ordinary Fijians have already benefited from this initiative even before it was delivered. In media, Vodafone and the other service providers took part in an auction for the radio waves of the 4G spectrum, which are owned by every Fijian. In a completely transparent auction process that was the first of its kind to be conducted in Fiji, the government raised more than $5 million. It's barely two months since the 4G spectrum allocation was made. So for Vodafone to deliver a fully functioning 4G network in such a short space of time, is a genuinely impressive achievement. The speed of the rollout reflects the connection speed of the technology itself, which now places Fiji in the front rank of the world's telecommunications providers. What is 4G? For some young people, you will already know and be excited about all the possibilities for faster downloads and high-speed internet. You may have already picked up the smartphone that you intend to buy to take advantage of this technology. We have put zero duty on these phones to make it easier for you to afford them. And as I've now announced in the 2014 budget, a task force has been set up to ensure that the benefits of the zeroing of duty is passed on to every Fijian. In other words, smartphones must become cheaper. And all importers and uh, retailers, I would like you to take note of this, please. Put simply, here's what 4G will essentially mean. From now on, the public can have access to state-of-the-art ultra-broadband internet through their laptops with USB wireless modems, smartphones, and other mobile devices. It means faster data speed so that a Skype call, for instance, will no longer suffer from lags or delays in any conversation. Video streaming and conferencing means that a group of business people in Suva can talk to their clients in Raki Raki in real time as if they were in the same room. The faster speeds also mean a revolution in the way we deliver some government services. It will now be possible, if you have the latest technology, to have a doctor in Suva diagnose the patient in some summer over the internet as if they were in the same room. In education, we can have smart classrooms, remote classrooms, where a teacher can be in Suva, giving instructions to students scattered around the country. The telecommunications revolution goes hand in hand with the new education revolution to form our vision for a clever country, a smarter Fiji. In addition, 4G has a bigger footprint or wider coverage than the existing 3G network. So you don't need as many towers to service a large area with telecommunication services. This means 
that service providers will now be able to service remote rural and maritime areas in Fiji much more effectively and at a, low, at a lower cost. And for an average computer user who buys the technology, 4G opens up a range of other possibilities, such as storing your information externally on cloud services. Cloud also allows you to access software remotely and more cheaply on a pay-on-demand basis without having to purchase an application. Yes, it all might sound uh, a bit complicated, but only because it's new. However, as we've uh, recent, seen recently, if not technology is accessible and, the, and affordable, the uptake of that new technology is rapid. Fijians have already shown a willingness, even a passion, to adapt to new technology when it becomes available. <coughs> Excuse me. Look at the way we've embraced mobile phones, which our parents would never have imagined, but which have transformed all our lives in the 95% of Fiji where they currently be used. 4G is going to help allow us to take that closer to 100%, the whole of Fiji. We're also extending existing services through our universal service access subsidies, which the government will pay service providers like Vodafone to move into remote areas that aren't commercially viable. Remarkably, using the traditional measurement, we already have mobile phone penetration of 110% almost two-thirds more than that of the biggest Pacific nation, Papua New Guinea. And we're empowering ordinary Fijians, just as we're empowering you with our free education program, our new roads, water and electricity, giving you and your families a better chance to get on in life. It's what my government is here for, to serve the ordinary families of Fiji, to expand their horizons, connect them with each other and the world, and to acquire knowledge with the best technology available. 26% of Fijians so far have access to the internet, and that figure is growing with every telecenter that the government opens. 15 telecenters are operating so far, with five more coming on stream in the coming months, in Kandavu, in Nandi, in Nosori, and two in the Suva area, in Lami and Kalamu. The number of Fijians using these centers has already exceeded 40,000, and these new centers will push that figure even higher. This alone is a huge boost to the ability of ordinary Fijians to access information and increase their knowledge and skills. I happen to believe that education is a long life, a lifelong process, not just the accumulation of knowledge in our schools, universities, and technical colleges. The point I want to make is that when we talk about a clever country, it's an inclusive vision. Not just free education for our children in primary and education schools and tertiary loans in our universities and technical colleges. It means everyone, no matter what their age, getting smarter is access to facilities and initiatives that the government provides to empower them and improve their lives. It's not some uh, just some empty gesture for short-term political gain, but an attempt over time to fundamentally reposition Fiji for a better future. Not only for ourselves, but for our neighbors, many of, uh, many of whom look to us for leadership and assistance. Our relative strength in the telecommunication sector means that we see ourselves as an increasingly important regional hub, just as we do for shipping and aviation. Because the future is all about connectivity. We want Fiji to be the conduit. Our future, our vision, is to be at the center of a web of connectivity linking our island neighbors with the rest of the world. A true hub, not just a geographical hub that we've always been. Our domestic reforms continue with our plans next year for the national switch which all financial institutions will be required to join and will break down existing barriers to enable bank customers to access their funds from any ATM. Even companies like Vodafone will be able to join the national switch. The national switch is also critical for e-ticketing. We're also finalizing laws that will facilitate infrastructure sharing 
between the existing telcos and any new entrant to the market. It will uh, dramatically reduce the cost of building new infrastructure, which will mean savings, savings to be passed on to consumers and increased focus on services. Ladies and gentlemen, none of these initiatives is being done in isolation. Telecommunications is not a luxury, but an essential service like any other. If those Fijians who are already marginalized missed out on our ICT reforms, they'll be even more marginalized than ever and the existing disparities in our social society will grow. We need to close the gap, not widen it. So the expansion of mobile and internet services needs to go hand in hand with the provision of other basic services such as education, health, water, electricity and roads. Tonight is another great, uh, great leap forward, not only for Vodafone, but our entire ICT sector, which is the envy of our neighbors and indeed much of the rest of the world. In the various uh, global ICT forums that the minister and I have attended, other delegates are genuinely impressed that a specific small island developing state could achieve such big outcomes in such a short time to best international practice. We were recently recognized by the G77 for the enormous strides we have made in ICT development. So thank you, the Vodafone team, for being an important part of that revolution. Congratulations on this milestone and we look forward to many more years of partnership as we work to improve the lives of every feature. Minakamaliyam and I thank you.